Reforesting efforts usually take decades to see meaningful difference. But what you're seeing was a cattle farm just seven years ago. Without the trees and wildlife, today it is a healthy rainforest with lots of animals. When I heard about the Nest Nature Center, I knew I had to make a trip down here to help spread the word. We all know that rainforests are rapidly disappearing from our planet, but the Nest is a powerful idea that I believe can help save the rainforest. I actually just arrived here at the Nest Nature Center in Costa Rica. I'm gonna be filming the wildlife here and trying to get the most beautiful footage I can as I tell you the incredible story of the Nest. I fell in love with how this rainforest came back to life and how wildlife returned to their lost home. So I documented this story hoping we can build a community that spreads and celebrates the protection of nature. I've been all my life on this land. When we finally had the, you know, the money and the knowledge to actually purchase the land and then like, do the re restoration process, we did it like in, in tiny little experiments in every section. I did those experiments with always like birds in my head. The nest is a mission to reforest the rainforest that's been cut down. Juan Diego and his partner Maria started in their hometown. They transformed a cattle pasture into this experimental nature center that tests methods to maximize the amount of biodiversity. A lot of the biodiversity, uh, we just lost it in the cattle pastures. You can see it here, like, we probably had like, you know, 30 birds back then when it was a cattle pasture, and we have like 180 right now. The reforestation methods used to create this habitat are simple and repeatable. At a high level, they are putting native plants across the property, creating water sources, building nesting sites, and then monitoring the wildlife to test these methods. It's like playing chess, like in slow motion. <laughs> like, like I plant a tree here, and then come back months later, years later, and then see how that plant is doing and what birds are coming to that plant. To help track these sightings, the nest set up several wildlife viewing areas, and each area attracts unique birds. There's a large canopy level platform with toucans and tanagers that also overlooks a set of ponds trails that allow a window into the dense forested areas. A hummingbird garden. And recently added nesting sites. This streak-headed wood creeper gathers tree bark to decorate their home. They made this back and forth journey over 20 times without pausing. The Kiel Bill Toucans have been checking out this open nest box for suitability. We're hoping for baby toucans and we'll report back soon. But the most exciting viewing areas to me are the photography hides scattered across the property. One of the great things about the hides here at the nest is that they are equipped with Wi-Fi. This makes filming in them, which can be hours and hours of sitting and waiting, a lot less boring. These hides may be the best place to film the incredible mating display of the white-collared mannequins. I started like leaving some parts of the property as a very dense thicket, with, you know, so the mannequins can hide and make their dancing legs there. And they, soon after that, they did it. The hides are right in front of these communal legs where the mannequins clear a bit of the forest floor and perform jumps and flips between sticks. You get the chance to witness undescribed parts of this spectacle.
While the male mannequins were busy dancing, this female mannequin was incubating her nest. We were so excited to see a pair of healthy eggs which could hatch at any moment. But the mannequins aren't the only birds that cross these hides. I left this camera out and remotely triggered it to capture these candid moments. These wildlife viewing areas have allowed the nest to monitor the reforestation and focus on the most effective methods. To keep a healthy, balanced ecosystem, they have to intervene when a plant species gets overpopulated. Several of this particular tree will be removed to clear some canopy for other plants to blossom, such as this uncommon fruiting shrub, which they've planted a lot of after seeing a variety of birds using it for food. They've also learned that planting these two species of Haliconia flowers has translated into helping some really rare birds. I never really expected a rare bird here. Like to have this like the second one this far north here, and we planted those flowers. We did it with our own hands. A rare bird that is just basically lost in, out of its range, is, you know, finding a little oasis here is like very rewarding. You know, like all these crazy hummingbirds are coming. Like we got fiery throated hummingbird today. We got you know, white crested hummingbird today. We got purple throated mountain jet today, and they are just finding a little oasis here. While we were filming this story, we got an unexpected call that we just couldn't ignore. So we made an unexpected trip out to try and see an extremely rare bird. And in the middle of a huge army ant swarm, it popped out enough for us to get some really good videos of it. The forest floor was carpeted with ants, but I barely even noticed, because staring at us was the ghost of the neotropical forest. The rufous vented ground cuckoo, an apex predator of the forest understory, and one of the most secretive and rare birds. They hunt for scorpions, frogs, and large insects with their massive tail smacking the ground to frighten these prey into revealing themselves. And in birding history, Juan Diego's two-year-old daughter, Ibis, is likely the youngest person alive to see the rufous-vented ground cuckoo. The next steps rely on generating meaningful revenue from the rainforest which will allow the nest to expand its property and show locals that restoring their own land is simple and can financially compete with agriculture. In forests nearby, there are rare birds like the ground cuckoo that are vulnerable to extinction, including the super elusive tawny-chested flycatcher, an oscillated ant bird. These birds need a large network of habitat to sustain a healthy population. So to help these rare birds survive, we need to connect patches of the rainforest, the biggest of which is Juan Castro Blanco National Park. The park's mountains are adjacent to the nest and underexplored. The first contact I have with nature was in that protected area. You know, my dad passed away when I was in kindergarten, so then I grew up with my uncle as my only, you know, paternal figure there to, to, to go with me. And for us, it was the fun of like exploring, you know, the unexplored areas. And we were thinking like, what, the birds we were watching were just totally new to science. If we can connect these mountains to the lower rainforest, wildlife will be able to safely travel between the elevations. This will likely benefit some rare, unexpected wildlife that could have a major impact on ecotourism and the local community. And we know it will also benefit bird migration. Birds like the scarlet tanager, and Baltimore Oriole rely on the nest to fuel up as they make their journey up to North America.
The long-term future of the nest points to technology as a tool for nature conservation. We have to put, you know, high-speed internet, you know, everywhere, any single corner of this program. It took a lot of effort, but we were able to put like the fastest possible internet of Costa Rica right here inside of the nest. So they're already one of the few rainforests with fast internet. But they're also laying the groundwork to broadcast the rainforest in real time and potentially into virtual reality. The investment into technology will hopefully drive revenue one day so that we can keep protecting the rainforest. Nature gives us so much. We're taking materials from the earth constantly. So to document efforts that are protecting nature, there's nothing more important to me. And if we can spread ideas like this, then wildlife around the globe will thrive. Planning to post periodic updates of the nest. Comment below if you're interested to see more and subscribe to be a part of the journey.